Previously on Pollux. The Lesla Nola Majoro, I know I don't pronounce it brilliantly, but it's been a massive issue for weeks ever since Supersport United announced that they, they'd signed him and then he hadn't. And then talk of, a, of this uh, Orlando Pirates pre contract. Simba Maruma, um, head of SAFPU, our, our professional footballers union, um, has got involved. And, and what I love about this is that we have a union that will step in to help players. I know a lot of people think footballers are overpaid and, and, and spoilt, but there are times when a player is forced to train on his own and, and, and doesn't get paid that Sapu have to step in. Simba? Hi, Neil. Uh, Simba, I'm told that, um, that Les Lanola Majora actually approached you guys when he got into Stuck at Kaiser Chiefs and, and, and you, st- you then agreed to help him in this dispute. Can you just take us through the bare bones of it, please, Simba? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Majora came through and... Uh, we 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 did assist him, um, and I believe effectively so. And as we speak, you know, Majoro is free to be able to go and uh, and join any club of his choice. Mm. Uh, he had a couple of problems with uh, Kaiser Chiefs, uh, unfortunately, uh, where he ended up, you know, being forced to train on his own and was suspended without pay, and uh, you know, which was completely. Uh, well, unacceptable uh, because the rules are clear regarding uh, these kinds of things. And um, there was a definite breach of contract there, which uh, we stepped in to be able to remedy. Yeah. And the remedy was that uh, ultimately he should be free to join a club of his choice and to be paid whatever he's, he's owed. There was a settlement that was agreed between the two parties, um, and that, was, that happened. And yes. with the understanding that if he gets his free, free, uh, free agency status, then he can be able to settle for a certain amount that obviously we, you know, we can't disclose, but they, they yeah. agreed on, on certain terms. And uh, his free agency to be able to join a club of his choice uh, you know, after Chiefs. That's right. Now, Simba, the, the, the most important point that we need to make is I mean, the Sowetan, Mark Gleeson, who, who's a very authoritative man in, in African football generally, the man who I took to, I took him to his first game of football in South Africa in about 1984. Mark came out in the Sowetan yesterday, a couple of other papers, just saying that Majoro can't play for another club because Kaiser Chiefs and Majoro uh, mutually agreed to, to, to end the contract. And if that was the case, he would then have theoretically have been in contract during the transfer window and can't move as a free agent outside the window. But as you so rightly said to me earlier, to, to, to say that um, for, for Chiefs to put out a statement saying that, 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 that there'd been an amicable agreement when he had to go to the DRC, the d- dispute resolution, to sort this out mm-hmm. is, is, is rubbish, isn't it? I mean, you, why would he go to a dispute resolution committee if there's an amicable agreement being made, you guys had to sort this out for him. So he is free to move to another club and has started training with Pirates today. Well, I'm actually glad that this whole issue came up. And uh, I'm glad that you know, someone raised the fact that um, outside of the window period, you cannot uh, play for another club mm. or you cannot move from one club to another. Because there is a lot of um, confusion around this matter. And I hope that it can be clarified once and for all. According to Rule 28.4 uh, of the NSL rules, a player, if he goes, if he wants to move, if there's a dispute, yes, and uh, he goes to the dispute resolution chamber, uh, whether through us or he represents himself. In this case, we represented Majoro as our member, as we do with many other of our members. Yes, um, the rule is clear that. If you are having a dispute and there has been a breach of contract and the DRC, Dispute Resolution Chamber, the, um, makes a ruling that a player can actually be granted a free agency status, that player is a free agent. Yeah. According to the article in the, in the Sowetan, it was basically talking about if a player and a club decide mutually that, okay, you know what, uh, how about we give you your clearance, we no longer need your services, or whatever the case may be, and they have a mutual agreement between the two outside of the dispute resolution chamber, uh, that player will not have uh, the right to play for another club until either there's a, the winter period or at the end of the season. So basically, uh, in this particular case, one of the 
terms uh, for a player to be able to register for a new club uh, is, I, you know, you have to submit, obviously, your IDs and other things, medicals and so on. Plus, a dispute resolution uh, award, chamber award, um, where if there is a dispute during the season and the DFC makes a ruling that a player can actually uh, join another club, even outside the, of, the, uh, of the window, then he's allowed to do so. So in, this, in the case of Majoro, that's the case. He had a dispute, and there was a definite breach uh, of the contract, uh, being suspended without pay and so on and so forth. According to the you know, Rule 17.1 of the, of the NSL rules, yeah. uh, you know, a player can only be suspended with full benefit, including salary and so on and so forth. Unless he's, there has been a DC and he's found guilty, then the, those things change. But in this case, there, were, there was no reason for him to be suspended without pay. And so there was a breach, and um, this, this was the remedy that was, uh, that was uh, found for him to be able to move on, find, a, find another club, and even though it's outside the window, he's, he's able to play. So, I mean, what, what I found incredible was that, was that Kaiser Chiefs come out and say it was an amicable resolution. Then, the, then some of the newspapers come out with a story saying, well, he can't possibly move to another club. Meanwhile... We're all at Loftus mm-hmm. being told that Majoro has now joined up with the squad. Uh, he's put out, I mean, Bolo Majoro, Bolo Joro today on Twitter has said, look, uh, here's my boots, I'm going training. We know now that, that there is no dispute about this. And yet still, with Kazuchis being such an enormous club, um, mm-hmm. th- that kind of misinformation I- is still doing the rounds. We need to make it clear. You guys yeah. act on behalf of players who, who are dealt with badly by clubs. My great problem here, Simba, is that I believe that, that too many of our footballers and all of our fans are often tre- treated as idiots by, by agents and clubs in this country who think that they can run roughshod over the truth. And, and, and it takes someone like you and, and, and Safpu looking after the players to make it quite clear to the fans and to the players, no, you do have rights. And you do have the right Absolutely. to know and you do have the right to make a decision on your own. And I, I need Absolutely. you to reinforce that, Simba. Yeah, no, thanks a lot, um, uh, Neil, you know, for, for raising that because... Um, there was no amicable, you know, resolution. That's that's why there was a dispute. That's why the guy went to the dispute resolution chamber uh, through SAFPU. So, um, you know, and and the one thing that I think is is a little bit disappointing in this particular case is that I mean, at SAFPU we feel that clubs cannot um, treat players as if they are. Um, you know, there's, a, there's, there's just a culture generally uh, here, you know, in South Africa in this day and age, which is actually, actually, you know, a bit disappointing. Where players are almost, uh, you know, treated as some kind of, you know, second-class citizens. Where you, you know, you, you know, you can, for a player to go train alone, this is a, this is a contact sport. This is a um, team sport, and uh, if you're gonna go train alone, the security is, is, is first of all. Um, you know, compromised. Anyone could have gone there and actually hurt Majoro, because you know maybe they're feeling betrayed that he's leaving their club and, and so on and so forth. And uh, things like that could have happened to the guy while he was out there training without you know proper security in place. And uh, you know we want to just uh, encourage and call on uh, the the footballing um, clubs as, as in in the in the country that we have to move away from you know this kind of. Um, treatment of the players because these are people's heroes these are people that make football what it is in the country you yeah. cannot just compromise them to that extent and um and not treat them with the due uh, respect that they that they deserve you know we we have a re- responsibility as a footballing nation as a footballing industry to build this country our kids yeah. look up to footballers and our kids also look up to, you know, the administrators in general. And how we run the, 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 the game is very crucial for us to be able to lay a foundation for even the upcoming generations um, and to shape their thinking, give them mentors and heroes. And uh, the first, the, and where it starts, is how we treat our players. It cannot, it cannot be, you know, just about um, being profitable and so Yeah. It's important. But the biggest thing and the legacy of the game it rests in how in the dignity of the players and not in anything else. No one sees the wallet, no one sees the bank accounts, but people see the the, the footballers. 
and the dignity if, uh, that they that they carry themselves with is also important and the the responsibility also you know is on the players shoulders as well to treat themselves as brands as businesses as as people that are, are supposed to make a difference in the country and also on our football administrators to also carry the you know the same banner of dignity and respect of our players then we can really build a footballing nation that's going that we can all be proud of Absolutely, Simba. I absolutely love that. Uh, I'm also interested in your take, and, and this is a, a complicated question. Not complicated, but but difficult question. Do you think that sometimes in his career, the agent has the right to turn around, uh, sorry, the player has the right to turn around to his agent and say, well, actually, I don't want to go there. I want to go there, and I'm going to have my way for once. Because the career belongs to the player. The career doesn't belong to the agent. And, and, and I think, and I haven't, I mean, I like Tim Sakazi as it happens. There's some agents in this country that I don't like. But I, I think that my dealings with Tim Sakazi have been reasonably good. And, and I, I just feel that sometimes a player is allowed to put his foot down. It's his career. It's a short career. It can end yeah. at any time with a broken ankle or a twisted knee. Sometimes a player must be allowed to turn around and say, nope, I'm going to go there. Do I want to go to Supersport or Pirates? No, I want to go to Pirates. What do you feel about that as an ex-player and a man who now runs our professional footballers? Well, absolutely right, uh, Neil. A player is actually the, play, the agent's boss. Uh, that must be clear. He employs the agent. He pays the agent. Yeah. It, you know, some agents have had issues with me. In fact, I had to part ways with some agents in the past because I had to be clear with them that, my man, you work for me. I don't work for you. You work for me. We're not partners in this. You are my employee. Yeah. You are in my payroll. So uh, if that is clear, then we can work properly. But, uh, and I think that's something that should be clear, even to upcoming players who, will, who are listening out there, that agents work for the player, not the other way around. Yeah. So um, the, absolutely. So a player has absolute carte blanche as to where he thinks he, uh, his career will flourish. If he feels that he shouldn't go to a certain club and because for whatever reason, and he prefers a different club to what the agent believes that he way, that he should go, uh, it should be first the player's decision because he's the one who's going to play as well, you know. It, it, and so it, it's important that a player can be able to put his foot down and be able to make the decision that he believes will work best for his short, very very short career. It is short, Simba. Uh, Simba. Let, let me just, I mean, some people might have got very short memories. Simba, as I understand it, you, didn't you play in a Champions League final for Sundowns? Um, African Champions League final. <laughs> you had a short career, you, 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 you know, and, and, and you've helped mm -hmm. out some of the great players in this country. You're also a cracker. When's your next, when are you analysing next? When can we see you on telly analysing next? Have you got one over the you weekend? Know, yeah, I've got one on uh, this coming Friday. In fact, tomorrow down in Cape Town. Right, so, so you'll be analysing the Ajax game in Cape Town. Guys, have a look at Simba Maruma, right? He played at the top level. He got to a Champions League final. He, he, he now represents the players. He's not the biggest physical bloke. I think I could have him in an arm wrestling <laughs> fight. But he is the guy who stands up for the players when they get mistreated, when there's a breach of contract. It's time that we start to respect the players and we stop mm -hmm. treating the fans and the players like, you know, second-class citizens. Just like you said, Absolutely. let's get the yeah. information out. Thank you, Simba Maruma, for what you do with SAFPU. Thank you very much, Neil, and thanks for, the, you know, for giving us the opportunity to, you know, to clarify these issues. And uh, we're more than, welcome, we're more than you know, happy to come back again and talk more about other things. Absolutely, yeah. man. You know, we've been speaking for quite a long time now. And, uh, yeah. Love what you're doing, but no doubt, uh, now I'm going to get pelted by the agents again, but... And, and some of the clubs, I've already got Kaiser Chiefs people on here, you know, bashing me over the head. But let, let's carry on doing what we do. Let's make heroes. That's what yeah, we need to absolutely. do, Simba. Absolutely. Thank you very, very much, Anya. And cool, thank cool. you to, you know, Bollocks Radio. Cheers, sure. Mike. You're welcome. Awesome. Thanks, Simba. Cheers. There we are. See, Simba, Rilla. Bollocks Radio. It is the Bollocks, guys. <laughs> guys, uh, look, it's not just in South Africa, but I think South Africa's got particularly. A difficult attitude from some of the agents that, I, that, that I've come across. Um, almost a, a colonial attitude, uh, I need to say that, uh, where they think that these players are all kind of, you know, they're pawns to be pushed around. And what I like about the majority of things, without knowing all the details, and I will speak to Tim Sukazi after this, who was Majoro's agent, who, who still is, I think, uh, there's going to be legal action, they're not talking. <laughs> I just feel like if we were players, and Simba was a player, he was a good player, 
But you should have the right to make your own choices about your own career and sometimes ignore your agent or disagree with him and get on with your football career. Let's look forward to Majoro playing against Free State Stars on Saturday. I know he's training today. Best of luck to him. I hope he gets a couple of goals before the end of the season. Balls.co.za Visual Radio.